Hey everyone, this is Christian Heimel, host of Press Row. Thanks so much for listening to the following broadcast, courtesy of Public House Media. This is Jenna Burt, host of the Confessions of a Military Spouse podcast here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, Confessions of a Military Spouse, where we dig deep and talk about the unspoken hard truths of what it's really like to be a military spouse. A new show comes out bi-weekly. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of Confessions of a Military Spouse. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. As time, you'll understand what lasts, lasts. What doesn't, doesn't. Time solves most things. And what time can't solve, you'll probably have to solve yourself. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome, Public House Media. Welcome to Choose to Rise. My name is Kim Meyer. I'm going to get this little necklace out of the way so it doesn't hit my mic. Welcome to Public House Media. Welcome to Choose to Rise. I'm so, so, so glad that you're here with me this morning. It is a beautiful Friday here in Iowa. There's no snow on the ground yet. And I am excited to be here with you. Today, I want to share with you a few tips uh, and things I've learned in my 20s. As we get older in life, As we go through life, there are lots of little things that you learn along the way. One of them, you know, when you grow up is when you're growing up, you're like, I never want to be like my mother. And then you get to into life and you're like, you know what? Mom wasn't so such a bad lady, (laughs) right? Um, Or all the little things that that go along the way like that. And today I want to share with you some tips and tricks from my past, from lessons I've learned along the way. And lessons maybe that you've learned along the way too, that maybe you just didn't realize were lessons or things that you've evolved into from doing in life that you just, you know, they came along with the ride. And when you look back and reflect on your life, that's when you really understand the magnitude and the, um, the blessings that came with um, life as it has. So a few things to kind of rock, rock, walk through today. It's Friday, people. Hallelujah, right? Um, number one, you are beautiful. If I could go back time into time and go back to um, my high school days or even in my early 20s in college, I would remind my young self that I am beautiful. You are beautiful too. And when you can honor that and understand that and not be searching and seeking out um, all the stuff that society creates and is beautiful, trying to be skinny, trying to wear the perfect clothes, trying to wear the perfect makeup, have your hair the perfect way, just understand that God made you as a beautiful masterpiece and that he has created you in his likeness and you are beautiful in who he's made you to be. You don't have to be anybody else. You don't have to seek out trying to be somebody else. You get to be who you are and who you're meant to be. And that makes you beautiful. You would stop worrying about all the extra things in life and start really worrying about who he's made you to be and understand that. So if that's one lesson I could go back and teach my young self, it would be you are beautiful and you don't have to try to force yourself into being something that you're not. The second thing that I would go back and tell myself my, or my early twenties or even into high school is that despite what you've been told, Despite what you've been told, you can't have everything in all ways all at once. Anything worth having requires work and time. And, you know, this is even something that learning, you know, as we continue to go through life here, when you are, you want a lot, we live in an instantaneous world, right? Where everybody wants everything right now. We have the microwave, (laughs) we have instant messaging, we have text messages, we have, you know, Zoom, we have all these things where you get to get what you want um, pretty instantaneously. Like Amazon Prime is like two-day shipping, right? Like we get things very quickly. But in order for it to really be something that sticks around, something that you really want out of life, you have to work for it. You can't just get into that size six jeans. You can't just automatically, you know, drop those five to 10 pounds that you're wanting. You can't just have the dream job that you're looking for. Good morning, Sarah. You just need to, things worth having require a little work. Things worth having require a little bit of time and effort and energy to put into them. And then it also has to be aligned with God's plan for you. And, you know, his, he's not going to, he's not an instantaneous guy. He's not like a send up a prayer, get the 
the action item or the thing that you want sent immediately to you. He requires you to put a little effort into it as well. And despite what you've been told, everything comes with effort and work. So put a little elbow grease into it and see what comes out of it. The third thing I want to share with you is that um, what you must do, what scares you. Being an adult is scary sometimes and being um, a young adult is, you know, sometimes we shy away from or we let fear get in the way of doing the things that we want to do. And, you know, being somebody who has dreams or being somebody that has goals, especially when you come out of college and you think you can conquer the world, right? Or you're in high school, you graduated high school and you're like, you know, my parents don't know nothing. I get to do whatever I want. And then you get to that first adulting thing and you're like, whoa, man, <laughs> right? But like when you, uh, you have to do things that scare you sometimes. You have to put your fears aside and do things that are going to help you um, achieve those goals. So you do things that scare you sometimes. When I think it's Eleanor Roosevelt that says, do something that scares you every single day and you'll be able to accomplish so many amazing things. Number four is adult friendships require constant effort and time. Now we all have those friends where you can like be apart and for a long period of time and you get connected with them again and life just starts happening again. Like you can just pick up that conversation just like you left them a couple months ago. I've got a beautiful friend like that. Her name is Teresa. Um, we were college friends together and now we were lucky enough that um, she married into the same family I did. She married my husband's cousin. And so we get to see each other like, every holiday. Um, but we don't get to see each other much in between. And she's just one of those friends where you can just pick up where we left off and keep going um, with life and catch up and, and be confident and comfortable in, in who we are as friends. Um, but you know, if there's there to have those friendships, they take a lot of work, they take some time, they take some effort. And if you're building new friendships, you can't just have instant friends, like you have to have there's that um, level of trust that needs to be built. And so you know, when we were friends on, when we were little, like you could just start swinging with somebody on the swing set and like, hey, now I'm your friend. Uh, but like there's, people have more walls up. People have more experiences in life and you have to be able to um, really work through those things in order to find a long lasting and, and, and beneficial friends and when you're an adult. The fifth one is when opportunity knocks, you have to answer the door. I also have a quote here on my desk that says, what's for you will not pass you. So when opportunity knocks, go answer that door, go seek that adventure, go do those things. And if that door closes or when that door closes, you have to open a window to keep moving forward. When what's for you will not pass you. God has designed a perfect plan for you, a his mission in your world that he has created you for. We all have a plan. We all have a purpose. We all have special gifts that are put inside of us. And when we connect to those things, when we open those doors, when we find those gifts and those talents, we are able to go out and do great things. Now, if it's for you, it will not pass you. It shall come back to you again. So be patient. Keep working through things. Keep moving forward with, with the actions that you need to get to that door again. And you'll be able to accomplish a lot of great things in this life. Um, go forward and be great, basically. All right. Number six is go to therapy. You probably need it. <laughs> and I, I've not necessarily been to therapy, but I have kind of done therapy type of things with friends, with personal development, with good books, with seeking counsel in many, many ways with the friends and the family and the clergy and the, the mentors in my life that I've really needed to. It's not a bad thing to ask for help. I used to think um, when I was younger that you know, early on after high school in my 20s and college that asking for help was a bad thing, that I can do it on my own. I'm an independent woman, right? Uh, but, you know, when you ask for help, it's not a sign for weakness. It's a sign of strength. It's a sign of courage. And when you start to work on yourself, when you start to work through the things of your past, when you start to really um, tackle the demons maybe that have been inside of you for a while, things, experiences you've had, you know, issues that have ha happened in your life, when you work through those things with a trusted friend, with a, with a counselor, with a um, pastor, with, you know, working on through them yourself, the journaling and, and personal development and mentors from afar, you can work through those things and go farther in life because of it. And when you let go of the baggage that's holding you back, you'll be able to go forward in a light way and move forward in, um, in, in a great way. The next one I want to kind of share with you is um, strike a balance between saving and experiencing. Now, there's been a couple times in my life that I'm not proud to say that I've, you know, hit the zero drop 
drop bottom of the bucket of my finances and had to borrow or, um, you know, bounce a check or whatever. But like when you can strike a balance between saving and always and living within your means and learning those lessons in life um, will take you much farther than if you, if you learn them earlier, it will go much farther than if you have to learn those things later on. When you can save what you have and, and learn, uh, experience great things and not worrying about stuff because you can't take it with you, right? What you, you're born naked and you go, to, you go away naked. <laughs> um, so you can't take anything with you. So why collect a whole bunch of stuff? Like stuff is fun. Stuff is great sometimes. Lots of clothes or lots of things in your life are good. We're coming up on the Christmas season and, um, and my kids are asking for a few things. And you know, like we're probably going to honor up a couple of those few things, but like, we're not, we're not into getting our kids massive amount of stuff. Like there's just really no reason for it. One, they're not going to play with it. And two, um, you know, there's, there's one or two things that they really want that they'll really spend time with or that they'll use a lot of. And so those are the things that we're going to focus on. We're not big on, on lots of stuff. We're really good on experiences. So last year, my kids' big gift was going to, um, skiing in January and we had tons tons of fun. And it's something we talk about all the time. I would much rather give them an experience and spend a little bit more on an experience and, you know, save up to go on that experience than it, uh, I'll ever, you know, giving them things that I'll just sit in their room or be sold later because they don't play with it. Right. So striking up that balance of saving for your future and experiencing amazing things instead of gathering up stuff. That's something I wish I would have learned a little earlier in life. The one of the last ones I want to share with you this morning is make exercise a habit. We all have these amazing metabolisms in as when we're little and when we're in high school and then we get to college and we change up all of our eating habits. And for a lot of us, if you're athletic in high school and you're not an athlete in college, now your routine is all off and you're not as active and you're doing a lot more partying or you're doing a lot more consuming of food at snacking time and you're just things are off. And so when you make exercise a habit early in life, you get to maintain your metabolism level. You get to experience happier um, endorphins. You get to encourage and have high energy levels all the way through life. And a lot of us, you know, don't figure that out. Um, I was a high school athlete. I was a college athlete. So I was moving, moving, moving. And then when I got into my first teaching job, I wasn't an athlete anymore and I was sitting a lot in my classroom and I was doing, um, you know, working with small children a lot. So I was down on the floor or whatever, but when I, when I ended up coaching, I was, I, I got active with them because it made me feel good and it made me, it helped me release some energy and, and get more energy as a result. But when you move more, you um, make it a ha and you make it a habit like brushing your teeth or, you know, combing your hair or all the other little habits that you have in life, you just get to have more happy endorphins and you get to feel good and you have to more energy in your life. Now that's definitely a lesson that um, I lost uh, going through growing up. I, I let life, I let adulting take over and um, not let me, you know, keep moving. So when we moved here and I, and I had this newer job, um, as a school administrator, uh, I, I let all of that go out of my day. I didn't get, I wasn't coaching anymore. So I didn't, um, athletic coaching anymore. I wasn't coaching sports anymore. So I wasn't in a gym. I wasn't getting active. I would go to work. I would come home. I was laying on the couch. I was exhausted all the time. I wasn't moving. But when I started moving more and I started making time for that exercise, um, everything else started being amazing again. I have more energy in my day. I can make it through the entire day. Um, I have, you know, more energy to give in other areas of my life. I feel better because I'm not carrying around all that extra weight or I'm not processing all the crappy food that used to go into me because I was just so tired to eat good stuff, <laughs> right? So make exercise a habit. That's a definitely a lesson I would hope that um, all of us would learn sooner on than later. And the last one I have for you, is a drama free and boring life is actually a great thing. <laughs> How many of you would agree with that? A drama free and boring life is actually a great thing. We don't need drama in our life to make things interesting. A calm, quiet evening is sometimes the best thing ever. And wrapping yourself up in negative energy and putting your energy into somebody else's problems or creating problems in your life that are somebody else's issue just it's not really worth the time and effort. If I would go back to my younger self, I would say, 
stay out of drama, stay out of uh, other people's business, focus on yourself and be wrap yourself up in positivity and fill your mind and spirit with good things. Because the people you spend your most time with are the people that you end up being. And so if you are finding yourself even virtually, like, you know, when you are diving into a good TV series, like, um, so let's say Real Housewives, good show, not knocking it, but just don't get consumed with it. Okay. You start to, you, you know, think and feel and be a part of that kind of energy. And so whether it's the stuff that you're watching on TV, whether it's the physical people that you spend your time with, whether it's the books that you're reading, find the the space where you can be drama free and living life in a positive way. That's going to help you get much farther in life than um, having tons of drama and putting all of your energy into things that really don't matter that much in life when you can turn your energy around and live in a positive way. So I hope some of those little tips and things are lessons maybe that you've learned along the way. Maybe they're things that maybe just I've learned along the way and I've just taken me this long to figure it out. But I hope that you um, are, are take something away from this today and that maybe you know, you really figure out that, you know, attitude is everything and being grateful is, um, is for everything that you have in your life is a, a powerful thing. And, you know, letting go of the fears that are part of your life that are holding you back from things, um, you know, getting rid of the drama when uh, getting active in your exercise, being balanced, getting help when you need it. And, you know, when opportunities knock, go for them. And most importantly, remember that you are beautiful, you are created for more and that you are um, blessed beyond measure because you are here on this earth and God's created you for a purpose. Thanks so much for listening today. And if you would do me a huge favor, go to, um, uh, Apple iTunes and hit, um, share and leave us a rating review. And it reminds me we had an amazing review again, um, lately. And I want to share with you that review. Um, so grateful for people that go to Apple iTunes and hit that review. Oh goodness. I gotta find it again, man. I'm not good at this. I need to remember to pull these up ahead of time. So I want to thank, um, Gabe, Gab, and Gabs Anderson. Um, she left a review on her Apple podcast last week and says, I recently started listening to podcasts and they've opened up my eyes so much. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you, Gabs Anderson, for your amazing review. She gave me five stars. I appreciate that so much. When you rate and review things there, they go, uh, they go higher in the list and more people are able to find Public House Media and choose to rise. So thank you so much, Gabs Anderson, for that Oh, that lovely review. I appreciate you so much. And I hope you're listening and I hope you tell your friends about public house media and choose to rise as well. If you're on the Facebook page, hit share, send it off to your own social media, let other people know about it. Um, make sure you like and, and share this public house media page and then go hit um, and do that review at the bottom. Uh, I appreciate you so very much. And if you've got lessons you've learned in your twenties, drop them below here. Let's talk, let's interact. And let's see you all again here on Monday when we're going to be talking about 10 ways to practice gratitude. And next week is Thanksgiving week. So we're going to be talking all about amazing gratitude and being thankful for everything that's in our life. So thanks so much for joining me. I will see you all later. Have a good one.